Today's presentation is Getting to Your Data with Click Connectors. I'd like to introduce your presenter for today, our own data connector expert, Alexei Dubovenko. Alexei? Hi, everyone. My name is Alexei. I am a R&D manager in Click. My primary focus is enterprise connectivity within Click and within different products. My experience with Click is about seven or eight years. Today, we're going to be talking about the enterprise connectivity options and specifically about the data connectors where my team is focused on. We call them enterprise connectors. Then we're going to be talking a little bit about how to configure the data connections, what authentication methods and protocols the data connectors support to connect to data sources. Then we're going to be talking about how to find the connector log files and what information we can get from a log files if something is going wrong. And finally, I'll give you some troubleshooting tips in case, again, the connection is not working as expected, especially if connection is not working at all, and even test the connection against the data source. So, Lexi, what are the enterprise connectors that we're talking about here? We are primarily talking about the four large things. So the first and the biggest one is an ODBC connector package. So the ODBC connector allows users to connect to different ODBC data sources, including but not limited ways uh, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Apache Hive, Impala, Spark, Drill, Phoenix, Presto, and many others. The next big one is a REST connector, which allows users to connect to any web services that exposes REST APIs. This connector can consume XML, JSON, and CSV data formats, and connector allows to create, get, and post requests to the remote REST API servers. It's also very flexible because it allows to do a lot of scripting and build a very complicated algorithms of loading the REST API data, the REST connector can be a very good option to connect to the remote server, even not having any specific data source connector to do this connectivity. Quick question, are those first two connectors, are those free with a regular ClickSense Enterprise license? Yes, all the connectors we were going to be talking about are bundled with general ClickSense Enterprise license. The third one is a Salesforce connector, which allows to do connections to salesforce.com CRM. It's very high performance and flexible and support two major APIs that salesforce.com provides, SOAP API and bulk API, including the PK chunking technology, which significantly increased data acquisition from a Salesforce data object that supports primary key chunking. And the third one is Oracle Hyperionis Base Connector. Okay. Um, can you explain why most of these are referred to as connectors? Well, we have the ODBC connector package. What does that mean? So if you look on a standard Add Data Wizard window on a ClickSense Enterprise, you will see a different connectivity options. Salesforce connectivity option or the REST connectivity option represents the one connector you can see a number of options like Redshift, Phoenix, Impala, BigQuery, Presto, Postgres, Microsoft SQL, and so on, represented by one connector. We call this connector ODBC connector package. So technically, this is a one connector that exposes 16 plus different ODBC data sources with different connectivity options. And that's why we call it ODBC connector package. Alexei, can you explain for us how these all work? If you look on the diagram, we have the connector itself, which exposes the UI on a browser or on a click view, depending on a platform. It's like the script load editor. Yes, and we have an engine and we have a script load editor. And inside, inside the connector, there are a number of ODBC drivers. When the time comes to load the data, then the engine consumes the clicks and script, transfers the script to the connector, connector separates the select statement and send to one of the drivers, depending on what connection was configured prior to the script. Driver addresses a database over the uh, network and get the data sent back to the connector and the connector sends the data back to engine. Do you think we can see how this all looks in the data editor? Yeah, sure. If you come to data load editor and try to create a new connection, 
we can go with something primitive like Amazon Redshift, let's say. This is a create new connection window where the users can configure a hostname, port, a database, username and password. That's a primitive authentication. Is everything for these connections username and password? Are there other authentication options supported? Username and password is the very simplest method of getting to the data source and authenticate. However, if we look on, let's say, um, Microsoft SQL Server, then we have a different authentication options. The authentication might support NTLM or if not NTLM, then just username and password. It's a built-in users to Microsoft SQL Server, as well as single sign-on uh, based on Kerberos. Single sign-on means that once user is authenticated in a click sense towards the Active Directory, then the identity of this user is transferred across all click sessions. So user does not have to even enter the credentials when it configure the connection. You sign in once in click sense and your identity is transferred for the data connectivity purposes. Alexi, what are some best practices when managing all those data connections to avoid having any issues connecting to data? Yeah, the connection should just work, right? So the, the expected behavior is you configure the connection, you press the test connection button, it works. You open a select dialog and pick up some data that works. You create a script doing a reload and that works and brings the data inside the click engine. That's an expected behavior. However, different things might happen. Usually it does not depend on the connector, but on the infrastructure that surrounds the connector, there is a data source which might be unavailable network architecture which might have some issues there are a few tips of how to troubleshoot the connection in case something goes wrong so the first i try to test the connection and connection does not work i try to check the server availability usually the rdp session is required on a machine where the clicks and server is installed once you open the rdp session I can open the command window. Let's try to test the connection to Microsoft SQL Server. So I usually for this uh, purpose, I use a telnet command just because the telnet command is most likely installed with Windows Server and if not, it can easily be added through the control panel. So I do a telnet and Microsoft SQL Server is domain name followed by the correct port 1433. And if it is a blank screen, that means that the connection worked. I know just from working in support that most connection issues tend to be network related. Can you show us what it looks like when it doesn't work as expected? Let me show you what happens if there is something wrong. Maybe there is a firewall in between where the ports are not open. So something is blocking this machine to be connected to the remote data service. And I will just put a typo in a port and we'll use one, four, three, four. The telnet report that connecting to our D-Idio-Demo could not open the connection to the host. So the connection failed. So that means that there is no straight connectivity to this server and this port from this machine. And that's a problem which needs to be addressed separately. Additionally, I can show you if we specify the right port but specify the name of a server which does not exist. So same story, connection failed. That's my technique of quickly troubleshooting the connectivity. Okay, what if there's a scheduled reload that fails or there are some intermittent errors that require some more investigation? Yes, let's try to configure the connection in a wrong way and see what can we take from a log file. So I will try to create a connection to Microsoft SQL Server. I'm going to put the correct server name and the correct port. I will put the correct database. And I even will put the correct username, but the garbage password. If I try to test a connection or I try to use a connection in a scheduled reload or in a manual reload, I will get an error. In case of a test connection, I can see this error on a screen. In case of a scheduled reload, the log files are only one way how to go deep in a problem and see where it is. Yeah, where do we find those log files? 
if I open the C drive and then program data folder, click custom data, ODBC connector package and logs, I will find the, the log file of the ODBC connector package prefixed with the name of the machine where it was taken. Uh, by the way, the custom data folder at the path C program data click contains the subfolders for all the connectors installed for Clicksense Enterprise Server, meaning that other connectors also have the log subfolder where the connector log is produced. If we open the log file, scroll down to the bottom, we can see that that was an error at this timestamp, and the error was login failed for user Alexi. The log files indicate the specific ODBC driver, in our case it's MS SQL Server, MS SQL, also has a different level, it can be just info level, or it can be warning, or that can be uh, even a debug information, or that can be error. Okay, but ultimately, this is where we can find more information about what's going wrong, and if it comes to that, support will probably be asking for these kind of logs if any support cases get created. Of course, as an R&D, we always ask our support to provide us at least two sets of logs. The connector log, which we're looking right now, and the driver log. Yeah, where do we find the driver logs? So by default, the driver logs are disabled. However, to do that, we need to open the registry editor and locate under local machine, software, click. In this folder, there are the subfolders for every ODBC drivers that comes bundled into ODBC connector package. In our case, we are interested in Microsoft SQL Server driver, so we locate this, click SQL Server ODBC driver, the subfolder driver, and all these folders for the different ODBC data sources have absolutely similar structure. We're interested in Microsoft SQL Server, we open the driver folder, and here is a typical set of registry settings. There are log pass and log level. Both stay empty at the beginning. So the log pass is basically a pass on a hard drive where the log file is going to be produced by the driver. And the log level is an integer value from 0 to 6, where 0 is no logs and 6 is a maximum amount of logs. Let's use it in the most aggressive mode and say that we want all the information, including the trace information. For the log pass, I prefer to put exactly the same folder where the connector produces its own logs. Practically, it's very convenient to have all the logs in the same folder. Paste in, in this registry value, save. The next time I try to use a connection, see the same problem, I will see the second file. Which is called click and server dbc driver if i open this file a lot of information some trace data you can see like a network dump so that helps us troubleshoot tricky situations yeah it's, it's nice knowing where to find these logs and how to set the log verbosity level that's great i would like to warn you let's configure a connection with the right credential set and do a very simple reload it's now renting the correct password Yes, that's the correct password, and now it works. I create a connection. Let's open Select Dialog and pick some database. Let's say AdventureWorks 2019 should work well. Let the human resources owner and load two tables, departments and employees. This is just a demo SQL database you set up? Yes. Let's insert the script, load the data. 800 records from one table, uh, 300 records almost from another table. If we look on the log file, that produced Ooh, 19 max of data. What would you recommend for a production environment? What should that be set at? I would recommend to set it to zero because normally in a production environment, you don't want to have driver logs at all. So the driver logs are only for troubleshooting. I would recommend to use log level 6, reproduce the problem, take a log and switch it off. Now we've got all those log files. It's good to know where to find them. They're kind of difficult to read. Do you have any recommendations on how to analyze them? Happy to tell you a couple of tricks. If we look in a connector log file, that's a little bit human readable. This is a CSV file, the comma separated. However, we do not use comma to separate the columns. We use a tab character to just make this file a little bit more human readable. 
and that can be read by ClickSense. To do that, the simplest way is just drag and drop this connector log file on a ClickSense a data wizard and then the load data and directly go to the edit sheet. As you can see, the, the application was immediately built from this log file where we can filter to the data source, we can filter by the errors. Uh, we can see an error message and an application ID and a session ID, and we can build in general any application we would like to build uh, over this log data. Of course, that's a very simple example of drag and drop in the single log file, but it's possible to build an application which will take the logs from some location, load them, maybe even incrementally, and uh, analyze and show the number of errors or number of different issues which happens with the connector. Nice that there's software available to help you analyze data like this. Exactly. Do you have any tips for improving data connectivity performance overall? Yes, we have a few tips. Again, in normal situations, the performance should be just enough. However, sometimes when the performance is not enough, and there is a one very common trick of how to increase the performance of the existing ODBC connection, you will need to locate the folder where the connector binary is lead. And that's usually C, Program Files, Common Files, Click, Custom Data, ODBC Connector Package, where is the connector exe and the connector exe config file, which is an XML file. If we open the this config file, scroll down, we'll find the app setting section. There are a number of options. It starts with driver abbreviation like MySQL or Oracle or Postgres, and then it's a dash reading dash strategy. And by default, their value is set to connector. In some cases, performance of that is not enough. You can modify this config file instead of a connector as a reading strategy specify engine. This will allow engine at the reload time to deal with the ODBC driver directly without involving the connector. Connector however, is still going to be used to create a connection, uh, manage the select dialog, bring a list of tables, list of fields, create a script, put the script in a script editor. However, when you press the reload or if the scheduled reload happens, there won't be any connector in between the engine, which in some cases might increase the performance. However, be warned that the metadata that the engine gets from our DBC driver might be slightly different from the metadata that engine gets from a connector, which is still going to work a click sense, but just do not be surprised. Okay, it's time for Q&A. Please submit your questions through the Q&A panel on the left side of your ON24 console. Alexi, which question would you like to address first? Um, so let's go from start. Uh, the question was about, is there a specific version that has fewer bugs with data connectors that you recommend? Basically, the, every new version we release uh, contains uh, bug fixes as they appear. So we always keep an eye on the quality and all our, always our next release includes as many bug fixes as we can do. So uh, technically, every new version should have uh, less bugs than the previous one. And I would strongly recommend to use as new a version of a connector as possibly all the time. Okay. Next question. Are these connectors the same for click view as they are for click sense? Uh, yeah, so uh, as I told before during the webinar, that how we build it technically, they are the same. They just expose in different UI in a click view and in a click sense, but technically connectors are the same. And we try to update the, and release a new versions for click view as um, often as we can. Great. Is there a connector available for Hadoop? So not for HDFS specifically, but we support number of uh, services from a Hadoop ecosystem, including Apache Hive, Cloudera, Impala, Spark, Drill, Phoenix. Um, so uh, you have a possibility to, to extract the data from a Hadoop ecosystem. Okay. I see there's a question there about ClickSense Cloud. Yes, are these connectors the same in a ClickSense Cloud? 
Uh, yes, they are the same. And again, our goal is support the same connectivity in all the platforms in ClickSense Cloud and ClickSense Enterprise, Enterprise on Kubernetes and a ClickView. However, sometimes the cloud dictates us some uh, limitations in uh, connectors functionality, mostly related to security. But in general, they are the same, or at least they support the same a number of data sources provided. If in case we are talking about the ODBC connector, but it's the same set of data sources for sure. The next one is what type of a connector requires separate license. So nowadays, the Click Web Connector package for non-subscription users and SAP connectors requires separate license. And the related question is, is the SAP connector part of the ODBC connector package? No, it is not a part of ODBC connector package. Uh, ODBC connector package is bundled with a ClickSense Enterprise and available on all other platforms with a ClickSense product. SAP connectors, a set of SAP connectors require a separate license. And so that's, that's a separate connector. And again, we're related to that. It is, is it possible to download the connector packages separately? And the answer is yes for click view, because in a click view, we do not bundle the connectors with a product. So whatever connector you would like to work with a click view, you need to go to the customer support portal, to the download page and the download connectors. I would recommend, recommend always the latest available version. You can download it for click view as a separate MSI package and install separately. Great. The next question is about Amazon Redshift connectivity. Is Amazon Redshift connector available? Yes, it is absolutely available for all our platforms. That includes, again, Click Cloud, Click Enterprise on Kubernetes, Enterprise on Windows, and a Click View. The next one is where can we find more documentation or instructions on setting up connections? Yes, yeah, so there are a few places we can get help on that. The first is, um, help.click.com and there is a, a special section for the click connectors so here you can find information about the connection dialogues and different options that offer it and authentication ways that support it for all the connectors not only the odbc rest and s base not only for enterprise connectors but also including the acp connectors and the web connectors package and the second resource i would to I would like to point your attention on is the click community website the community.click.com which uh, most like a forum where you can uh, uh, the first uh, look through the topics that were already discussed and there are like millions of them and the second you can always submit your question and get a help on that that's great so the next question is whenever i try to load custom fields in jira using the rest connector they show in quick as a label not a field name any help so it's hard to tell right now the straight answer but i definitely know that you can address the support team uh, so create a support ticket and uh, support will send this to r d and our engineers will take a closer look what's going on in your specific case great the next question is ClickSense better at connecting to the data than a Tableau? Are there data connectors and clicks that aren't available with a Tableau? Well, I can only answer from the cloud, click, click cloud perspective. So it looks like the Tableau online service has less connectivity options than a click cloud services. Uh, specifically, I'm talking about the SAP connectivity. So the ClickSense cloud supports SAP. The next one is what's the best connector for adding Google Sheets? And um, this is a part of a web connector package as far as I know. So we can go, uh, if you go to help.click.com portal and open the click web connectors and open the sub chapter, the data sources included in a click web connectors, you will see Google Drive on a spreadsheet. That's great. Okay, Alexia, we have time for one last question. The last one is, uh, where can I find resources for setting up a connection to SharePoint? And again, the SharePoint is a part of web connectors. Um, here is the help page on that. We have a separate connector, which is called Office 365 SharePoint. So you can follow this documentation link. link you can find all the, the information you need. And that's a part of web connectors there? It's a part of web connectors. Great. Well, thank you very much, Alexi.
Thank you, Troy, and thank you, everyone, for joining our webinar today. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. We hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you to Alexi for presenting. We appreciate getting experts like Alexi to share with us. Here's our legal disclaimer. And thank you once again. Have a great rest of your day.